Isaiah chapter 9. And the Bible corrects the errors of the ways. Plain and simple. That's a warning. Isaiah chapter 9 would be 1 Samuel. Ninth book of the Bible is 1 Samuel. Nevertheless, the dimness, that goes back to chapter 8, verse 22. Dimness. Shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first, he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun, and we'll look at this in a moment, and the land of Nephetai, afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, Mediterranean Sea, beyond Jordan and Galilee and the nations. Verse 2 is first advent, the people of Israel that walked in darkness, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land, Israel, of the shadow of death, upon them has light shined. What is that? Matthew 4. Matthew 4. I don't know how far we're going to get in this. Matthew 4. Verse 15. Verse 14. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, there we go, the land of Zebulun, the land of Nephthah, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the nation, Gentiles. Isaiah said nations. Scripture with scripture. Gentiles of the nation. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach. So we're looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. Before Jesus came in the land of palace, it was darkness, death. So there you go. Isaiah 9.3 Thou hast multiplied, increased the nation, Israel, and not increased the joy. Israel has been popular. There's a lot of Jews. But there's no joy when Jesus comes. You know, when Jesus comes, there's devil possession. There's blindness. There's lameness. There's leprosy. There is people deaf. They're ill. They're sick. They're under these burdens of the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Man, there were a lot of Jews. There was no room at the inn. <laughs> but there was no joy. Again, now you see that you see that 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 that, that colon. That's the first advent we just read about. Now we're going to go to the second advent. We haven't had the we the first advent happened. We haven't even had the second advent. You see that colon right there? That's the church age and the tribulation period. How many years? I don't know. They saw Calvary. They couldn't even understand a colon. And they don't have a colon. <laughs> They're in, not increasing joy. They joy before the according to the joy in harvest, millennium, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, victory. Second Advent, verse 4. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor, the Antichrist. As in the day of Midian, and you go back to Judges chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and uh, chapter 7, 12 to 14, and 12, 28. We're not going to go look at that. So in Judges, we read about a, an event with Midian, 
And we see it in Isaiah writing about it. And we've been talking about it in Evasion, chapter 8. And then it goes to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. History repeats itself. And you're not going to know history if you don't read the history. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Would Isaiah understand what a jet sounds like? Would Isaiah understand what a tank sounds like? What a machine gun sounds like? Listen, when John writes the book of Revelation and it is revealed to him Mystery Babylon and all of these, the, the events of Mystery Babylon and, and John stands back like there was no Catholic Church. There was no Muslims in his time. He's looking at that like astonished. I mean, imagine somewhere in B.C., Isaiah, and boom, all right, he's brought up to, to the 21st century. What is, what is it? A confu it wouldn't be a confused noise for us. Garments rolled in blood, destruction, death. But this, this, upcoming battle. Listen, there are at least two more world wars, three world wars coming. At least shall be with burning and a fuel of fire, gasoline, kerosene, diesel. They didn't have that in Isaiah's time, they didn't have it in the Apostle John's time. All right, verse six. I gotta read carefully. This is first advent, and then again, mark in my Bible, it's so. All right, for unto us, the nation of Israel, he came unto his own, his own received the, don't throw the church age in there, don't throw the, the Gentiles in there yet. We're not in it yet. The first Gentile that gets saved is in the book of Acts chapter 9. There was a Gentile woman came to Jesus and he, he, he called her a female dog. He said, no, nah, I'm taking care of the children of Israel. <laughs> but the crumbs off the... See, you can't go throw the church and, and the Gentiles in Matthew, Mark, Luke. <laughs> Maybe John, if he's very careful. For unto us a child is born. Okay, that's Jesus Christ, the human. Man is born. Unto us a son is given. That's Jesus Christ, God. Now, given is an adoption. Born is birth. <laughs> Plain and simple. So, number one, do you want me to pick on the Jehovah Witnesses first or do you want me to pick on the Catholics first? <laughs> For the Jehovah Witness, that child that was born 100% man, Jesus Christ, came out, I want to be clean, out between the legs of Mary from the womb, as any normal child is born. Jesus Christ came from the vagina of birth through Mary, the virgin birth, and we read that in chapter 7. I'm, try I'm trying to be clean. He's 100% man. A child is born. Unto us a son is given. The son of God. Given, not born. The humanity side of Jesus was born of a woman, a virgin. The son of God. This is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. Is given, not born. Now, there is a distinction and you can't explain it as far as the Trinity, but there is God the Father. There is Jesus the Son. And yet Jesus is the is God and God is Jesus. And yet there is the Father and there is the Son and Jesus may say, my Father, my Father. 
There is a distinction. And yet there's not a distinction. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses get blown out of water. But that distinction here, the child, all right, that is the human side of Jesus. The son, that's God. That son that was born, is, I mean, that child that is born is the son that was given. That's God. That's Jesus Christ. The son that was given, God, of the child that was born, the human side of Jesus, that's God, Jesus Christ. God is Jesus, Jesus is God, yet Jesus is the Son of God, and the Father is the Father. Okay? I hope when we all get the glory, God will explain the Trinity to us. And when you study the Bible, there's an aspect that looks like the Trinity all goes back into one. But I'm not going to go there right now. So do you understand that... God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Jehovah's Witnesses deny that. But yet there's the Father God and there's the Son Jesus, and yet they're one. There it is right there. Now, number two, Catholics. Mary is the mother of God. Is she? All right. Unto us a child is born. Let's be clean. The vagina birth of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth. Yes. That child came out between her legs. She, he, there he was born. Amen. And people say, I don't, I don't value the birth of Jesus. All right. Now, remember I just told you that God the Father and God the Son? The Son, Jesus Christ. All right, God the Father. Unto us a son is given. That's not birth. God the Son, and application, I believe it's Mark, Mark or Luke, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, God the Son, this is my beloved Son, is given, not born, that side of God was not born to Mary. Mary gave birth to the human side of Jesus, a child is born, as far as the God side, the, the Son of God, my beloved Son, it was given. I want to be clean. I'm trying to be clean. If I'm not, I, I apologize. And I plead, the, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But God did not pass through the vagina of Jesus uh, of Mary's womb the day he was born. Probably the Feast of Tabernacles. There is God the Father and there is God the Son. Mary is not the mother of God. She's the mother of Jesus. You say, whoa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the Trinity problem. For unto us a child is born, the human side of Jesus, a son, the, the godly side of Jesus is given. There it is. That rebukes the Jehovah Witnesses and that rebukes the Catholics. Uh, I hope I was clean. And with another sin today, I just... Plead the blood of Jesus Christ for my sin today. And if I was perverted in explaining that, I plead the blood. And I, I apologize if I done it perverse. I try not to. But there's a child born. We know what the birth is. And there's a son given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Singular. The rulers of the nation of Israel wanted him dead. The government. Singular. And listen, Israel was a church state system. You know, we're against church state. Well, God set up God to be the, the, the theophysis of the, the God was supposed to be the ruler, theophysis. But they wanted a king like all the nations. So God said, okay, here's your king, but you got the priest. The king works with the priest, and the priests work with the king. You see where the Catholics mess it up? You see where the Mormons mess it up? 
The priests were the children of Levi, the children of Aaron, not Gentile. You see, remember I told you, get rid of the Gentiles here? We're not talking about the Gentiles. You know, you talk about the pilgrims coming over here, and, and you talk about the men with the black hats and all that, and then they became the congregational church. You know, they set up the new Israel, the new Jerusalem here in Massachusetts. Do you know what many of the names of, of the cities of the 13 regional colonies, especially up New England, Cana, uh, Salem, a lot of places where I grew up, which my memories fail, but they, they come from the Bible. Why? Because we had the new Israel. And we have a church state religion called the Congregational Church, and yours pay taxes to us. This is the Congregational Church set up in New England where I grew up as a kid. They became the new Israel. The Catholic Church, we're going out there, get the kingdom, we're going to fight for the kingdom, the crusader, all in the name that God has provided us, the, the church of all churches, that we can go out and conquer in the name, according to what he told the children of Israel in the Old Testament. That's not church age doctrine. And they go run to the Old Testament and they go run to the Gospels. And that's their error. And if you look at a map of, of cities in New England and, and the Mormons, there are cities found in the Bible. Well, not the Mormons. You can't find any of their cities and names of people. I mean, I'm trying to remember some names. Uh, just, just towns and areas of towns. They're all Bible names. In my mind, I just forgive me, my mind is going. Because America was a new Israel. Was there persecution? Yes, there was. The Salem witch trials was the congregational church burning and killing heretics. You know who did that in the New Testament? Paul did. When here's this new sect of religion under Jesus Christ, and according to the Old Testament law, Paul was doing what he was supposed to be doing, getting rid of the false teachers, getting rid of the false heresy, though Paul was in the air. Paul's zeal of killing Christians and imprisoning them is what the law said. And that's why when Paul comes to me and teaches the mysteries and teaches us about the Gentiles, that's why he rebukes the law. Say, listen, I was under the law and I thought I was doing right. Oh, boy, was I wrong. So the government here uh, upon the shoulder of Jesus Christ is the Jew. He loves the Jew. He came onto his own, but his own received him not. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Is it now? Yes, to a selected few people of born-again Bible-believing Christians. And yet there are Christians today that don't consider Jesus Christ wonderful. Donald Trump is wonderful. Biden is wonderful. My NASCAR race car driver is wonderful. My basketball player is wonderful. My boss and my company is wonderful. Fill in the blank. And we have a passage of the first advent, and then what? We go into the second advent, and we go into the millennium in one verse. How do we get a child is born, and a son is given, and then all of a sudden we're in the second advent, we're in the millennium, but they saw Calvary. Do you know what they wanted to do with Jesus when he was on this earth? When he fed them in John chapter 2, they wanted to make him king because he brought food. Did you read about that? And Jesus left him because he knew they were going to make him a king. How can they make him a king without seeing Calvary? Hey, you did exactly what God did to us in the world. Did they not bring up the manna? Is not John chapter 6 talking about the manna? He said, you know, your, your fathers died. I am the living bread. 
And then you get the Catholics come along and say, well, you know, you got to eat and drink Jesus. Man, they messed totally up on John chapter 6. John chapter 6, the Jews were going to make him a king because he fed them with bread and fish. Well, that ruined the philosophy of the Old Testament. They saw Calvary. There was no Calvary when he fed the 5,000. What did the leaders tell Pilate? There's a man that professes to be a what? A king. Had Jesus gone to Calvary yet? Absolutely not. But they saw the king. What did Pilate write above the head of Jesus? The king of the Jews. Had, well, he's on Calvary at that point right there. <laughs> Where were the Jews? Well, they were mocking him and getting ready for the Passover. Getting ready for the Passover. I thought the Passover was on the on Calvary's cross right now. You mean they saw Calvary and they left the Messiah on the cross to go take care of the Passover? The Passover was on the cross. They didn't see Calvary. If they saw Calvary, they would have followed the dead body into the empty tomb. They knew three days and three nights. He said, I'm coming out of that grave. And we got to set a seal so his apostles don't come and steal the body. They knew if they were looking for Calvary and looking for that Messiah, they would have been at the empty tomb. It would have been a, when Jesus came out of that empty tomb on the third day and third morning, there'd be a big crowd of people there looking for Calvary. Not even his disciples were there. The women went there, and the angel said, he's not here, he is risen. And the women go back to the disciples. Hey, we see an angel, and he said, he's not here, he's, not, he's risen. Did the disciples believe them? They were looking forward to Calvary. No, they didn't believe the women. And they'll say, well, they look forward to Calvary, now they're called Christians. Acts said, Holy Spirit writes to us in Acts. They were first called Christians in Antioch. There's no Antioch. But we read Damascus. What was going on in Damascus? A Pharisee was going out killing Christians according to the law. And then he met Jesus and got saved. And you don't hear about Damascus anymore. You got to read the whole Bible. So the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Some call him Wonderful. Counselor. How many people go to Jesus for counsel as Christian? Not talking about unsaved. <coughs> huh? And truly sought the counsel of the Lord. How many Christians are in debt because they didn't pray to God over it? How many Christian marriages are ruined because they didn't truly seek God on that person they were going to marry? How many Christians have been deceived by pulpits in the world because they didn't study their Bible and didn't check the preacher out? Counselor, what are people doing listening to a woman preach? When in the pages of the Bible, and I believe the modern Bible too, a woman should not assert the authority over a man. Now you wait to apply these applications and these titles and attributes to Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords upon David's throne. The mighty God, tell that to Jehovah Witnesses. There we go. We just blasted them out of the water again. Tell that to the Catholics who think the Pope is the mighty God. The victor of Christ. The everlasting father. You mean the title that the Pope holds. Wait a minute. The everlasting God, the everlasting father. A child is born. A son is given. That's Jesus. Throw that to the Jehovah Witnesses. And they'll flumbo and go, and they probably got a class in room 405, something like that, on how to rebuke the Christian on Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And this seminar will take two hours to do.
And then we have another seminar in room 387 on going to 508, knocking on his door, and he'll teach, teach you everything the Bible. We, listen, I've gone to the Jehovah Witness compound. And I walked up to their gates at their compound, and they threatened to call the cops on me. And I got it all recording. Check out my, my videos on YouTube. And the Prince of Peace. There's a Catholic church in, in Ormond Beach. The Prince of Peace. Ha! Ah! You mean with the Inquisition? You mean it, it, with Wycliffe today that we study in our Bible study? How you, you not only killed Wycliffe, uh, his dead body, he died of a stroke. And I think it was 44 years later. You killed Wycliffe by bringing him out of the grave, his dead body, and burnt his dead body and threw his ashes into the river. That's how angry you, you, he, you that's how angry Wycliffe got the, the Catholic Church. They killed him again, the second death of Wycliffe. And you're the Prince of Peace? When I read Fox's book of Martyrs and I see, and there's other books out there, Martyrs Mirror, on what the Catholic Church. And you're the Prince of Peace? And you orchestrated World War II and Adolf Hitler, a Catholic? Rudolf Hess, a Catholic? And you're the Prince of Peace? And you sent our troops, troops over into Vietnam? You're Roman Catholic agency? And you're the Prince of Peace? You're the Prince of Peas that roll on the floor. Of the increase of his government and peace. There's no peace, say the Lord, unto the wicked. There shall be no end. That's the second advent going into the millennium. You know, at the end of the millennium, that thousand year, there's one more time that the devil tries. And God, that fire came from heaven. <clears throat> Wow, that was a big, that was a big upset. But isn't it interesting at the end of a thousand years, complete, absolute, no curse, everything's right except for the serpent. And the devil can still mass up a mass of people to fight against Jesus and his people. Upon the throne of David, so you've got a problem with verse 6 with the Roman Catholics. All right, go over to Luke chapter 1. We're not going to get as far as I thought. Oh, well. All right, someone the other day, a quote from me. We're going to take our time. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. And he shall be great. Who's that? Verse 31. Shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the. What's that word? Oh, wait a minute. Let's look, let's look at verse 31 all over again. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. What's that? A child shall be born. And bring forth a son. And a son shall be given and shall call his name Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses, you soak my religion. And some people say Stalin doesn't honor the birth of Jesus. I just blew the Jehovah Witnesses out of the water. With the birth of Jesus. Luke 1. Yay. Verse 32. Fire, fire shot number 32. And he shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. There's that son again. God. H. Capital. And the Lord God. Isaiah chapter 9. Shall give 
unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom sh there shall ha be no end. Back to Isaiah. Back to Isaiah. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Get along, little Jehovah Witnesses. Mama Jehovah Witness, you got a baby? Well, it says males that are virgins. Even the virgin, even the Jehovah Witnesses don't know what a virgin is. You know, I'm amazed with, with the Jehovah Witnesses in Daytona Beach, Florida. How many of them are colored African Americans? And they need to study to say what they said about the colored people. We need to look that history up. For unto us a child is born, and a son is given. I think I just read that somewhere. And the government, singular, that's the first time government shows up too, by the way. Shall be upon, that's why I can't read my Bible. I got my Bible so marked. Shall be upon his shoulder, singular. And his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W, Counselor, capital C. The Mighty God, capital G, the Everlasting Father, capital F, the Prince, capital P, of Peace, capital P. I got Daniel 9, 25. The increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. I think I read that somewhere. Somewhere I think I just read that. To Mary, who's not the mother of God. And if Mary's your God and the Pope is your final father authority, you're denying the scriptures. Where your RSV, we, we read the other day, says a young woman shall conceive. And then you flaunt the Virgin Mary. But your Bible don't say that. Confusion. God's not the offer of confusion. And shall be no end, I think I read that somewhere, upon the throne of David. All right, let's read it as theologians want to read it. And the peace of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon Calvary and upon his kingdom. That kingdom, if you put Calvary, would be the Catholic Church, would be the Congregational Church, would be the Republicans. Would be the Old Testament Jews looking for Calvary. But it doesn't say Calvary. It says the throne of David. The throne of David in Jeremiah is wiped away clean until Jesus comes and sits down. And he doesn't sit down on that throne at Calvary. Jesus is crowned with a crown going to Calvary. But it's not gold. It's thorns. And when he comes back to get that throne, he's got many crowns. And a title, not the king of the Jews, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So there, there are Christians out there, there are Baptists out there, and Jesus is the king of the church. Never, nowhere, absolutely, correctly wrong. The only time Jesus is the king of the church is in Revelation 1 says we are kings and priests. We're not kings until the second advent and the millennium. And not all Christians are kings because it's an inheritance earned. Then Jesus Christ becomes the king of the kings. And upon his kingdom, millennium, to order it. And to establish it with judgment. What happens at the second coming of Jesus Christ? He separates the sheep from the goats. The goats go off into hell. The sheep go off into the millennium. And the people of Israel go in. And the saints that have been judged during the church age at the judgment seat of Christ, we come in. And those that have the right to inheritance gets their inheritance. 
I don't know what happens to those that don't get no inheritance. Establish the kingdom. All right. Paul, yes, sir. Here's your city. Peter, here's your seed. Style it. Maybe I get one city. I don't know. And throughout, the, here's your city. He's established. This is your city. That's your city. That's your city. That's my throne, David. All right, David, you and I set it all. Let's set up that temple. Let's get the priest in order. Let's get everything all established. Exactly how Joshua did when he got into the promised land. Joshua's going to happen again. Joshua's going to walk up to Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Joshua. Deja vu. I feel like I've done this before. I know. It repeats itself. And at the rapture, I'm cruel. At the rapture, all the body of Christ is raptured. Have you read the book of Joshua? Uh-huh. Yeah. How many Christians know that there is the second ad there's a second coming of Moses? Third coming of Moses. Fourth coming of Moses. He showed up in Exodus. He showed up on the mountain transfiguration. He's going showed up in the tribulation period, and he's coming back in the millennium. Let's see, Elijah. He shows up his lifetime. He gets wrapped, he comes back in tribulation, he comes back in the millennium. Three, three comings of Elijah. David, he gets two. He, he shows up in his life, and he comes back in the millennium. <laughs> well, you're not going to learn that in church. You're going to learn about a bunch of vegetables talking to you. You're going to learn a bunch of worldly stuff. Open our books to this great author about junk. And keep the Bible closed. And we're going to go through the whole Bible. Well, we'll skip this part. We'll, we'll finish this part. And we'll do the chapter in, in five minutes. And order it. And establish it. And judgment. And justice. From henceforth ever and forever. There's another judgment coming after the millennium. There's another judgment coming after the second advent. The great white throne judgment. And then there's something about those healing leaves in, in the new Jerusalem. Nations are allowed to get something that I don't have no idea. I'm not going to get, but this, I would assume that's some kind of judgment. I don't want to get into that. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Will means it's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. So we're going to stop there. I was going to get to a couple more verses, but we'll stop right there. There is many, much great things that are going to happen. And everything in the first advent has been fulfilled. You guarantee everything in the second advent in the millennium will be fulfilled. It's the glory of Jesus Christ. And if I kicked your religion, I'm sorry, it's the Bible. And if I kicked your assembly of your church and stuff like that, I'm sorry, that's the Bible. And there are many Christians that don't know this stuff to the error of them not studying the Bible themselves and to the error of their preachers and pastors not teaching them. See at the judgment seat of Christ in... Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. There'll be heads with crowns. There'll be no heads with crowns. There'll be some that hear well done, and there'll be some that won't hear well done. When, the, when Jesus told Paul to write, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You don't study, you're going to be ashamed. 